This is the Oregon Fan Show on Fan Media Network. Welcome in another episode of the Oregon Fan Show on Fan Media. Alongside Juan Williams and Tyler Peterson, I'm TJ Brassel. And we were just talking before, before we got this going. Juan, you were you're thinking like we need we need a legit name for this show. Is that that what you're saying? Like what was the name you were thinking of? Yeah, so uh I working title here, but the quack corner is what I was thinking for us. I feel like, you know, there's three of us. We're we're a nice tight corner. We just need one uh fourth member, you know, when we have guests. All right, I like it. I like it. Ty, if you have anything else, you feel free to bring it up. And if anyone else has any uh, other ideas for the names of the show, feel free to let us know and we will absolutely take it into consideration. But before we get this going, I was so watching the Elite Eight games today and it kind of got me thinking a little bit of last year with not having a tournament. And like, I don't know how you guys feel. And I know obviously it's way worse for the players and the fans, but like, I'm still really salty, like watching Arizona go, Arizona women's go to the final four now and like probably Stanford and sitting here like, man, like we should have had such a fun run. And it's just really eating at me right now that like we didn't get that chance to watch Sabrina and Ruthie and Sot too and all of them just like create greatness in the tournament. <laughs> I don't know what you guys Absolutely. think about that, but. No, you're right. You're right, TJ. I mean, like it. For the longest time during the regular season, it would it like ate at me. Watching watching Stanford this year actually sort of makes me feel the same way mm-hmm. I felt last year watching Oregon. Obviously, two two different teams, two different styles, but the way they've carried themselves and just basically just rolled right over their competition all season. It was the way Oregon was doing it, and the way they won the tournament. You just thought this is their year. And unfortunately, we never got to see any of that come to fruition. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah, I would say this, it, was the, it was the year of what ifs for me. It was just like I wanted to see, you know, who was going to show up in that final four. Was it going to be Oregon, Baylor, South Carolina, UConn? Or was it going to be Oregon, Baylor, Texas A&M, UConn? Just the, what, what bunch was going to show up? Just because I knew uh, that last year's team was going to get there. They were, they were on a mission from the start of the season. They were going to get there somehow, some way. Absolutely. And I mean, that leads perfectly into let's talk about let's kind of wrap up this women's season as obviously it ended uh, in the Sweet 16. And I mean, Ty, what you were just talking about comparing saying how last year's team is kind of how you feel like Stanford's team is this year. I was I was kind of thinking about it. And honestly, this year's Oregon team, there's some similar parallels to last year's Stanford team like last year, like Stanford had all the talent they were just super young. Like they had this mm. really amazing recruiting class coming in and you could tell they were going to be good, but like, like Oregon wiped the floor with them every time they played them because they had all the, they had the talent and the experience and they were just ready to roll. Now this year, I mean, granted, granted Stanford has brought in some, some new talent and stuff like that, but I mean, all the people that they had, they're a year older, they've, they've gotten all of that under their belt. And I feel like I can just see that, being the same for Oregon next year. I mean, they're one of their Oregon's biggest things this year, ironically, like especially kind of down the stretch was offense. It wasn't defense. Like their defense was dialed in. It was, it was scoring points. And I would feel like Kelly Graves being an offensive coach, like that's probably the best problem to have because he's going to have a fix for that. No, absolutely. Uh, I'd say take it a step further is just an experienced guard. You know Uh, you have a, you, you had a Sabrina uh, that could, you know, be your dominant ball handler the whole game. You could give it to her in a moment. We see it now with Arizona, with Ari. You know, you, you give it to Ari at the end of the game, and you let her decide the game for you. And Kelly Graves had that last year and the years before. And now this is what Tara has and, and Kiana Williams. So, you know, you, you need that. You need those bigs in the front court to take you to the tournament, but you need that experienced guard to get you through the tournament and to uh, the final four and beyond. So, uh, you know, it's, it'll be another year for Kelly Graves and the team. And I'm sure the, 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 the tower twosome will come back better than ever. And, and we'll, we'll get to see them shine. And, you know, that really was what was missing from that Louisville game. I'm just, if we can just go through it real quick, I think, Absolutely. you know, right at the start of that game, they were playing sort of like that bully ball with Louisville, which is what we sort of thought they needed to do. Get down low, let Prince and Sabley sort of run it. Um, Maddie Shear started at point, 
uh, since Pow Pow was still out. Mm -hmm. She went down early. She went down in the first. And then all of a sudden, bring the point, it was Chavez sometimes. uh, I think Bully sometimes bring the ball up the court. They didn't have someone facilitating that scoring. And then once Prince got a couple early fouls, Louisville took over in that second quarter. Dana Evans came out of her slump and went off. And, you know, Oregon really did not have any kind of response until the third. They made a nice little 9 0 run to get sort of back in the game. Um, but once Sobley got hurt, it just, it, it went all down from there. And I hope she's okay. I didn't, I didn't hear what happened, but uh, it was certainly a big blow at the time. Um, but the game just got away from them at yeah, the end. And I mean, the like, they, they even, they even cut it to six when Sobley went out. Like, like, there was a second there when it was like they might still pull this off and then kind of figure it out in the next game. And they just couldn't quite get there. But I mean, the season ended kind of the same way as like how the season had been going since a little Mm -hmm. before the PAC 12 tournament. It's just one thing that Oregon, I feel like has avoided avoided for that whole run with, uh, with Ruthie and, and Sabrina and saw too, was they avoided like major injuries. Like, people were dinged up and missed time and stuff, but like, like Sabrina was always there for the tournament runs. Like, and that's something that this year they just haven't been able to avoid. Like Sedona was hurt for, for a portion of the season. Uh, Pow Pow obviously being out was, was big. And then Shear was playing really good when she stepped in for, for Pow Pow. And she was also kind of like the leader on that defense. Like she was guarding the best player on the other team and was really shutting people down. And so I, I agree. Like it was, it just kind of, it felt like it just piled up and got like, got too much at the, at the end of that game. Very true. And you, to, to every, to both of these points, it's, it was a, it was a game of runs. And I, I, I think I pointed to the probably like the six minute mark in that third quarter that you were talking about TP, where you saw the, the, the they cut it to six. Um, and then Sedona, is basically dominating in the middle. And then I think at, at that point in time before, no, right after Sabli, Sabli got injured, the Louisville coach put on a full court press, you know? So now you're, you're taking the, the tallest person out of the, out of the equation. She's at the back, she's in the back end near the goal. And now you're giving it to the, the young guards and it's like, okay, break this press. And that's when uh, Louisville started, uh, started back on their tear. And then Dana Evans, oh my gosh, she gave us issues, problems, and no solutions all games. I swear. When you watch her and Ari, it's like, man, you're you're, you're watching two phenomenal scorers at, at the point guard position. That they're they're coming downhill every time, and they have a green light to shoot. I wish I had that type of green light to shoot. You, you always have that green light one. You always got. You want? You're right though. That press. If you remember, right after Sobley got hurt, I think you were right there. But it's like down six or eight. And when someone gets hurt, that can either like break your spirit or can really mm-hmm. rally the troops. And on that inbounds to get that ball in after Sobley got hurt, it was a turnover in the backcourt, which led to a Louisville layup. Yep. I mean, at that moment, you saw sort of the, the sandcastle just crumble. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, going on to the men's, their game, a little bit different. And I feel like, obviously, it's disappointing when you lose, like especially when you get make a run this deep into the tournament. But it was just it was how they lost. It was the fact that like, like I felt like, like they could, even though they lost by a a good margin, like they could have won that game. They just, and even Dana said after, like he regretted not playing Kepnong more once he, once he saw what he actually did in that game, he regretted that. And I felt like, like they didn't, they looked like they were scared to attack, which was unfortunate because this team, like we haven't seen them be scared all year. And it just, it didn't look like, the Oregon that we knew could be there and could make a, a run deep, deep, deep into this tournament. No, definitely. I mean, I'll, I'll say it again. It, it's a, it's a game of what ifs, you know, you, when you look back on the, the 2019 men's uh, ducks, you, you have an experienced Peyton Pritchard who was lighting it up mm-hmm. every time he steps on the court. And it's like, okay, they would have, they could have, they could have done this last year, you know? Uh, but then you, you, you look towards here, you, you have a Chris Duarte, you have a, a Will Richardson, you have a LJ Figueroa that are leading the team and you, you run into a buzzsaw of, of 
Mobley and Mobley and then a shining star in Italy, uh, Edie. And, and it's like, man, you know, you, you just wish a couple of those shots would have went down or they would have missed those tough shots. It wasn't like we weren't, we weren't playing any defense on them. They were hitting yeah. very tough shots. And then Evan Mobley is the, is the engine that runs that, that train. And he didn't really have to, you know, have a have too much of a of a game for for them to win. But he had enough to where, you know, he's getting everyone involved. And now instead of us, you know, um, uh, oh my gosh, uh, giving giving him all the attention, it's it's like okay, now you have to you have to guard Evan, you have to guard Isaiah, and you have to guard uh, Edie as well. So it was a it was a, a three headed monster that we had to deal with. You know, it's funny though. I don't know if you got this feeling at all, but even even late into the third, I think they were, or even the fourth, I think they were down 18 or something real late. I, I still felt like that, like they were in it. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't really feel like Oregon was playing that badly. They were making good offensive possessions. It's just that USC was scoring. Um, mm-hmm. Oregon made a late 11 0 run and it could have been 13 0 had Figueroa not messed up that alley. I think Kepna and Figueroa came together on mm-hmm. alley. Um, and then I think, but I don't think it was called, was it? <laughs> I mean, and I think I, I'm pretty sure I, if I remember correctly, Edie hit a three on the other end, which sort of ended that. But um, I don't think they played that badly. I just thought they got beaten by or they got outclassed by USC. They USC did not have Isaiah Mobley in their first matchup against Oregon when USC beat Oregon. Um, and it just showed um, an extra facet to that offense that mm-hmm. – USC has used, not all season, but we brothers haven't been scoring together like that all season. It's only a late um, late in the season thing that Mobley has yeah. been scoring as, or Isaiah has been scoring as much as Evan. And then with what Isaiah White was doing from three, it's just, it, you can't stop that kind of shooting performance. Absolutely. And now next episode, we'll get into a little more of what we kind of see for the Ducks, both men's and women's, for next season and how we kind of see that unfolding. But before we go, I have one question. Well, technically I guess it's two that I've been uh, waiting to ask Jawan. We only have a couple minutes left, but so Oregon spring ball starts this week. And I just really need to know from you, what is your favorite memory and what is your worst memory from spring practice throughout your years at Oregon? Oh my Um, favorite memory is always the game. Uh, cause they, they always do a great job of celebrating, um, our, our military members and those that serve for us. Um, and so just exchanging jerseys with them, them giving us a pin dinner or something of that nature, uh, is always special. And then, you know, just keeping that in my locker. So every time, um, I, I, you know, get down or I'm in a rut, I can look to that and, uh, worst, oh man, it's, it's always, it's always the conditioning, you know, I feel like when you get, when you hit the, the, the spring and summer, it's like, okay. We're not we're not getting ready for games, but you know we're just getting ready to to play football again. So there's always some type of conditioning at the end, and you know the 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 infamous uh, Jim Radcliffe always has something up his sleeve uh, for <laughs> for spring workouts. So it's it's always it's always a fun time, but you know you're gonna get into some shape, especially with him. Absolutely. I mean, real quick, just one or the other. Which is worse, spring ball or fall camp? Ooh, uh, definitely fall camp. Yeah, football okay. camp. You got to remember, I, I I came in when we had actual double days. So you're doing two full padded practices. And I'm like, yo, this, <laughs> this is not right. <laughs> oh, well, I can't wait to hear more about that. And that's all the time we have today. But we will get a lot more into this in future episodes. So appreciate you guys for joining the show again today. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We will see you next time. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, simply create a profile on Fan Media's iOS app or website. Select your teams and make a short intro video on your phone. Show hosts, reporters, former players, and superfans can use our Get Verified feature and make an intro video as well. And our mobile newsroom staff will reach out.